Welcome back to Jyoti Hydroponics Farm videos. Let's get started to get better at farming. Today we'll be learning about the polyhouse. A polyhouse works on the concept of greenhouse that lets in light and traps heat inside. But instead of glass, it is made from polythene sheets or flexible plastic sheets. We use polythene sheets to construct a polyhouse which makes it little difficult to withstand harsh climatic conditions. Therefore, we are going to consider the weather conditions for setting up a polyhouse. If your area of plant faces this kind of climatic condition, you really need to rethink about the location of the setup that you are planning for your hydroponic system. Let's go ahead to our next slide. Now, big no to polyhouses for following issues. The places that has extreme heat. If the heat in your area is more than 50 degrees Celsius and it lasts for more than three months, then you need to drop that spot. If the heat condition is between 40 to 50, we can still go ahead with the help of foggers, shade nets and fan and path system. But more than 50 degrees Celsius for more than three months in your area, the polyhouse set up for a hydroponic system, it's a big no. So I would say any place that has 50 degrees or 50, more than 50 degrees and it lasts for around more than three, three months in a year, I would suggest never go for polyhouses for your area. Next issue is with the extreme winds. So if your area is extremely windy area, then also you need to drop your location and search for a new spot. Because by extremely windy, I mean if the speeds at your location are more than 130 to 145 kilometers per hour. Withstanding this kind of wind all the time will be very difficult for a polyhouse and constant maintenance work will never let us become profitable. Because these sheets, they are very expensive. So I would suggest if you have extremely high windy areas, I mean the wind speeds at your location that is more than 130 or 145 kilometers per hour, then I would suggest drop your plans for your polyhouse in those areas. I'll show you a video here for the polyhouses that we have in windy areas so that you have a clear picture about it. What actually happens to the polyhouses in windy area? So just have a look here. Now, as you can see here, the winds, they are blowing like anything and they are just blowing the poly sheets that we have on our poly house. So we always suggest just drop your plants where you have high windy areas. So that actually would really require a lot of maintenance for your poly house. Uh, that would again make the business in loss. So I would suggest not to go ahead with uh, the poly houses in windy areas so you can also have a look here on the picture itself how much maintenance is required to these poly houses in these windy areas let's move to our next slide now the third region that we don't recommend for poly house is the shaded region so if you are considering a region below mountains or surrounded by mountains and it is shaded for most of the time, then it is also not good location to start the project. Plants are going to suffer in the photosynthesis process due to low sunlight levels. And still, if you are planning to actually construct your poly house under the shaded region, then you'll have to install the uh, grow lights, which again increases the capital of insulation and also increases the capital for electricity bills that you need to actually pay every month or every two months because even in night you'll be requiring it even in day you'll be requiring it so it becomes very difficult to actually manage everything at one go so i would suggest even not to actually uh, get your poly houses constructed in shaded region let's go to our next slide the next comes the extremely polluted area we need to always avoid the extremely polluted areas as our plants consume gases like carbon dioxide through their leaves. If they are exposed to other harmful gases, they might consume those too and we won't be able to produce healthy plants. Additionally, 
Extremely polluted areas develop many fungi issues for the plants. It will directly affect the quality and yield of our produce. So I would suggest never think of installing your polyhouses in the polluted areas. So finally, we can say that there are four regions we need to avoid. Near the sea, which has high speed windy areas, high hills, areas covered by mountains, and extremely polluted areas. If your location is out of these areas, then you are good to start with a plant. Let's go to our next slide now. Now, this is the best part for hydroponics, which actually is the farm layout with the grow bags. I'll be also sharing the videos of the complete setup of the farm with grow bags. But just for the idea here, I'm just showing you the image of the uh, farm layout, how it looks with the grow bags. These actually are the grow bag slabs, which has three inlets for the plants. Each bag weighs around 2.5 kg and is capable to carry approximately 25 liters of water. Let's go to our next slide. These again, this is uh, the kind of NFT system with a pipe wherein we have actually removed the pipe from there and instead of that we have actually installed the grow bags in complete NFT system. So this is also one of the best options for actually making the plants grow in vertical form. We'll discuss about this again in our next videos where I'll be showing you the complete video setup of this kind of installation. This is again the grow bag again. Uh, here we are actually taking specific grow bag size. The size of this grow bags are 40 into 24 into 24 centimeters. Each grow bag is capable to hold 12 liters of water and the cocoa peat that we are adding into it, each grow bag requires approximately 1 kg of cocoa peat which actually holds approximately 10 to 11 liters of water so this again is one of the best options and here you have separate inlet of transferring water to these plants so the separate inlet of water to each plants avoids spread of diseases from plant to plant so that's the reason why we prefer grow bag system where we have one grow bag for one single plant so that there is no transfer of diseases from one plant to another because the pipe NFT system faces issue of transferring diseases from one plant to another because there the complete water is being circulated. So if one plant has a disease, that same water which actually circulates in the pipes, they actually carry the disease from one plant and it's being circulated to all the plants that we have installed in our setup of hydroponic system. These are geofabric grow bags. So just have a look at the video of these grow bags. As you can see here, these plants, they are very happy as they have separate space for them in each grow bag. So even they feel very happy, they give good production, they are very easy to install, they are very easy to take care of. So we always suggest to have single one grow bag for one single plant. Make sure when you are installing your hydroponic system, always go with grow bag hydroponic system. This would help you out to reduce a lot of work. Here, you need not to regular check your pH or EC of your water. You just need to check your pH and EC once in a day in the morning when you prepare the nutrient solution for the plants. That single day, we only give that much amount of water to the plants that actually plants require. So we make the solution ready every morning and we give only that much amount of water to the plant that actually plant requires. We never ever circulate water because we are not sure about the water that we are circulating. If it has carried the disease from any other plant and then it's being circulated. We are giving separate outlet for separate plants in our hydroponic system. So we make sure that whenever we install hydroponic system, we always go with grow bags. Let's go to our next slide. This is again the farm layout technicality of grow bag bed. Here you can easily calculate the amount of plants that you can easily install according to the space that we have shown you on the screen. Approximately 35 square meter of area we can easily install 150 plus plants. So you can just calculate here uh, how many plants that we are installing in 35 meters, uh, 35 square meter area. 
according to this you can calculate if you have one acre of land that means it has approximately 4083 square meters so when whenever you are making a poly house on your one acre of land you need to make sure that you have maximum cultivation area in the poly house so that you can have maximum number of plants so approximately when we are setting up hydroponic system with grow bags we make sure that we have 12,000 plus plants in one acre of land because that gives us the maximum output. The maximum that we have installed is uh, 14,000, but I would suggest always go with only 12,000 because that gives you much working space in your farm. So this must have cleared a lot of your doubts. I hope you like this video. Let's see you in the next video. Till then, goodbye and have a nice day.